Good morning. Today we're going to investigate graphs and linear relationships. To do this, we're going to need an experiment. So the experiment will be fairly straightforward. We're going to use a battery along with a resistor or a load. And what we're going to do is manipulate the number of batteries. So we're going to increase the number of batteries. Altogether, as you can see from the table, we're going to use six batteries for this virtual experiment today. Each battery has a voltage of 1.5 volts. And so, in response to the number of batteries we're going to use, we're ultimately going to measure the current through this circuit. Whenever we consider a graph, we need to consider what our independent variable will be and our dependent variable. The independent variable is always graphed along the x-axis and the dependent variable is always graphed along the y-axis. So for today's experiment, the voltage of the battery will be the independent variable. This is the variable that the experimenter is in control of. The current, however, will be the dependent variable. The current will change in response to how many batteries or how much voltage there is in the circuit. Notice whenever we label the axes, we include the units. Please make sure you do that for every graph you create. Notice how detailed the title is. The relationship between the current in a circuit consisting of a single resistor as the voltage increases. The title should have the independent variable in it. The title should also include the dependent variable in it. And the title should include any other details that are important for this experiment, in this case, a single resistor. Next, we need to choose an appropriate unit for our graph. For the x-axis, we're going up by half a volt, and it's consistent. For the y-axis, we're going up by 0.1 amps. Again, it's consistent. Next, we plot our data. This is a virtual lab. The goal of today's video is not to explore that particular experiment, but rather to investigate how to do a proper graph. So there's our data. Now we've created a line of best fit. A few notes about a line of best fit. A rule of thumb is that there should be an equal number of data points above and below the line of best fit. Notice that this particular line of best fit does not go through the origin of the graph. That may be common in some experiments and in fact, that may have some meaning when it doesn't go through the origin of a graph. So don't try to force your line of best fit through the origin. Now often when investigating a linear relationship, you need to calculate the slope for your line of best fit. Whenever you do a slope, you need to choose two points on the line. And that's very important to note. These two points have to be chosen on the line. In addition, the points you choose do not have to be a data point. So I've highlighted some data points there. And you don't need to choose data points. Finally, the points you choose should be very far apart on your line. And so there's the first point I've chosen. Notice it is not a data point, and that's fine as long as it falls on the line. So why have I chosen that point? I've chosen this point because it's easy to read. Notice the x value for that point is half a volt, and the y value for that point is 0.2 amps. So when you choose a point, make sure it's very easy to read and that you're not guessing what the voltage or current is, what the x or y value is, that the x and y values are very specific. The next point I've chosen, notice, is very far from the first point. In general, the further away the two points are, the more accurate your slope will be. Again, why have I chosen that specific point? Well, the x value is easily read to be 8.5 volts. And the y value is easily read to be 1.6 amps. Again, these points do not have to be data points, and for the points I chose today, they are not data points, but they have to be on the line. Next, we draw our rise and run. 
I prefer to see two different colors used to represent the rise and the run. You don't need to circle the points as I just did. In fact, you don't have to do that at all. The run is 8 volts, and I like to see that labeled in the graph. And the rise is 1.4 amps. Again, I also like to see that labeled. Please remember to include the units whenever you write a number down. So, let's calculate the slope now. Slope is rise over run. 1.4 amps over 8.0 volts. That works out to be 0 0.175 amps per volts. And considering significant digits, our slope is 0 0.18 amps per volt. Why two significant digits? Notice our rise has two significant digits and our run has two significant digits. So our slope will have to have two significant digits. This is the reason why I ask you to choose the points very far apart. If you choose the points too close together, then for example our rise may only be 0 0.8 amps. If the rise was only 0 0.8 amps, that's only one significant digit, and then our slope can only have one significant digit. So the further apart you choose those two points, the more significant digits our slope can have. It's very important to interpret what the slope means. So in this situation it means the following. For every increase of 1.0 volts, the current increases by 0 0.18 amps. Now the one thing I haven't mentioned yet are outliers. An outlier is shown there. If you have an outlier and you notice it while doing the experiment, then try to retake that data point. If, however, you've already completed the experiment, you put away all the equipment, and you notice an outlier after the experiment is completed, then you need to indicate why you think that outlier exists. You need to write a sentence about an outlier. So hopefully you've gotten a better understanding of some of the key points to creating a graph. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.